Yes, it's a program of the Ministry of Health. That's a government ministry here in Grenada. Today we are going to be talking about cholera and with us to do so is Dr. Alistair Antoine, a very familiar face to this program. He is a medical health officer down at the ministry and we have Mr. Francis Balwin who is a senior environmental health officer also at that ministry. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Cholera is a very important topic right now. It's being discussed in all different circles, regionally, internationally. Um, before we get into the meat of things, um, just tell me a bit of what is cholera? Well, um, good morning um, everyone, morning viewers. Cholera is an acute diarrheal infection and it is actually caused by ingestion of food or drink that's contaminated by a bacterium called Vibrio cholera. Okay? It is a communicable disease. That is, it is capable of being transmitted from one person to the next. And um, although in some cases there might not be any symptoms, we, you know, we'll go into a little detail in a while, but in some cases it can be very severe. And when it is severe, um, death can occur within a matter of hours. Wow. So, cholera is a very uh, dangerous sickness, it seems. Um, tell me, what is the state of cholera in Grenada? What is our, our stats with that? Well, um, maybe I can answer here. We've been hearing a lot that cholera, the epidemic, is now in Haiti. Right. And it, we, from a regional standpoint, uh, we will make a status in Grenada. We have not experienced that, that epidemic within the last two centuries. Mm -hmm. So the last time Grenada had experienced cholera was 200 years ago. Okay. So, yeah. Well, in fact, in fact, just on that matter, I um, was doing a little research with regards to the history of cholera. And um, I actually found two sources. One source which claimed that an outbreak in 1830. Mm -hmm. And um, from our local historian, George Brizan, actually, um, he claimed an outbreak in uh, 1854, I think it was. Mm -hmm. And um, on the fort that is close to where the General Hospital is located. In mm -hmm. fact, in fact, um, the um, cholera victims, as it were, persons who became, he came down with it, were taken care of in a back adjacent to the fort that later became the colony hospital. Mm. And that remained until it was recently um, broken down and we have the new general hospital that we have today. Wow. Go back with me as to how one can contract cholera, that kind of a sickness. First of all, one has to, as I said, ingest. Either you eat or you drink food that's contaminated with that bacterium. Mm -hmm. And of course the bacterium would get into your body and multiply, develop, and um, and that's how the the infection um, um, gets into into your body. Okay. So, in order to well, that is how you contract it, the transmission. And I mean, people ought to know about how um, how a particular disease is transmitted, in order for them to understand what they need to do to prevent. Exactly. Okay. So. It's transmitted by food or by water or drink. Because when I say um, drink, if one makes juice with contaminated water, they can um, get infected that way. If one even make ice from contaminated water, some people feel, well, ice, you know, can have germs. But if you use contaminated, contaminated water 
to make ice, then uh, you can be infected that way also. Okay. To add a little to what the doc, doc, Dr. Antoine said in relation to how it is transmitted, because we from the Environmental Health Department, our role is to educate and the prevention. Mm -hmm. the, uh, that's, that's our main focus. So the opportunities like this, we want to use it to advise the public, despite the fact that we, we have what you call a color a lot or a so of the sensitization because it is not on our shoes as yet. We will hope it never. I, sometime in, it was in the year 1992. Color had come as the closest he had come to the Caribbean was Guyana and so mm. on. Well, uh, because there was an outbreak in Peru in 1992 and so on. And we had to put all the measures. <coughs> and I, um, we, uh, we, uh, I think I, uh, it's, it's, it's good right about know what we're doing. We're not waiting. Mm. We, we, we're sensitizing the public fully. Mm -hmm. well, we, we hope that it according to re, we hope that it never reach here, which yes. we, we would want it to reach here. Mm -hmm. But we have to put all our contingencies in place and so on. And we would want now to ensure that all our population is aware that we put all our necessary precautionary measures in poor, I mean, to in sanitation. Mm -hmm. Sanitation it will be the key, and personal hygiene in terms of. How, what we do before we eat, you know, washing of hands and so on. Mm -hmm. Because other than the whole question of in, because it, it is a disease of the, what you call the gastrointestinal tract. Mm -hmm. So also the, the fecal contamination is, is a key. Like for example, the, the, the feces getting into, like for example, someone who might have, might have um, for example, let me say how the disease can, 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 can come to Greenland. Right now, the disease is, 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 is now an epidemic in Haiti. Just imagine that a tourist from Haiti managed to leave Haiti and come to Grenada, right, as a visitor, and enters one of our hotels right there. And while they start showing the coming the and the <coughs> symptom of the, of the disease, which with mainly, and doctor will speak a little more about that, the whole question about diary. Mm -hmm. Because diarrhea will be one of the main, watery stool would mm -hmm. be one of the main signs and so on. And that person now used the toilet at the, at the, at the hotel um, facility, right? And not been able to actually clean, 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 clean properly and so on. And there is spillage over, right? And that somebody else might be able to go and use that toilet and, and maybe the finger. Uh, might got in close contact with that feces there mm -hmm. and they didn't wash their hand carefully and they go and touch the food and they eat it. That could be one of the means of getting the first case into Grenada, into Grenada and so on. So the, 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 one of the key things is actually washing of hands at all times and that goes for all food safety, that's a, a key to food safety in general to, pr to protect from any other diseases that could be transmitted by via food or water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Dr. Um, Alistair, can you just speak to me about the symptoms so that we get that cleared up? Yeah. Okay. Um, just before I, you know, elaborate on the symptoms, um, you, are, you had asked earlier on how can someone be infected with that disease. Mm -hmm. And just to elaborate, I mean, Mr. Baldwin started speaking a little about that, but when there are certain foods, if it is not properly prepared, um, like it might not be cooked, if the thing is, it might, um, like there are foods that one might use in an uncooked state. Like sometimes Salads. some people might have, um, well, whether it's um, vegetables or water and to fresh it up, you know, you might sprinkle it with some, you know, some water. If that water um, that they use to fresh up the vegetables and so on is contaminated, mm -hmm. and you know, you 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 eat, let's like, say, if it's raw cabbage or lettuce or something like that, and you use that uncontaminated that contaminated water, then that could um, be transmitted that way. Also, foods that are half cooked, um, that is harvested from an infected area 
then it can also be transmitted that way. And let's say there is food that might even be cooked sometimes, but the person who is handling the food did not practice proper hygiene in terms of hand washing and so. And according to how, and sometimes some persons who prepare food or in sharing out the food, they do some degree of handling. And if they did not um, practice proper hygiene, that can aid in some fecal matter, as Mr. Balwant was saying, being transmitted. There are certain persons also who might be termed carriers, mm -hmm. healthy carriers. They might have the disease, um, but they themselves are not, they don't have any symptoms, they're not sick. But for a few days, they still can shed um, the virus in the stool. No, the bacteria. Oh, sorry, the bacteria. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> thank you very much, <laughs> Mr. Bowen, the bacteria <laughs> in the stool. Um, sometimes I talk so much about virus, viral disease, <laughs> uh, okay. when we talk about HIV and uh, influenza yes. and dengue. <laughs> so, but um, the um, um, Vibrio cholera is a bacteria. Right, it's a bacteria. Right, so if that is on the hand, so they can transmit it um, to the food in that way. Okay. And um, so the symptoms in before also, let me just say that. It is said that about um, people can get exposed um, um, to the bacterium and not really develop any symptoms. In fact, it is said that about 75% of persons um, don't show, um, develop any symptoms at all. Mm. Um, who, and, but although they might not show any symptoms for a few days, they could still be shedding it in the stool if they are infected. Okay. Then of the remainder, um, 80%, that is the remainder, because 75% don't develop any symptoms, and of that remainder, 80% might have mild or moderate symptoms. Okay. Um, that would be some diarrhea, maybe a little vomiting, and so on. In that case, that can be treated with normal oral rehydration salts, or just like we treat the normal gastro or the normal diarrheal disease. Mm -hmm. The remaining 20%, they develop what we call severe cholera disease. And in that severe disease, there is profuse watery diarrhea. Um, as though if they drink, it just comes, as right though it just mm -hmm. goes right through the system and comes right back out. But they may also develop vomiting. So you would have vomiting, you would have diarrhea. And when you have both vomiting and diarrhea, there is nothing in the stomach, um, there is nothing in the intestines that cause imbalance also within the body in terms of electrolytes and so forth. And if um, fluids is not given to these people, persons. In fact, when you reach a severe situation, um, and especially if you are vomiting, you cannot drink. So you have to have, you have to be admitted to hospital, and you have to be treated with IV, IV intravenous fluid. Um, and that intravenous fluid should actually contain electrolytes and those things that you are losing to really keep the balance in the blood um, within normal um, within normal limits and also um, the quantity of hydration quantity of fluids that you need that you'll be losing you have to put it back and a little more mm -hmm. so if someone is not treated is left untreated with the severe case then more or less that person could die mm -hmm. right yes <sighs> wow uh 
You, talk, you spoke about contaminated water. That seems to be a really big issue when you talk about cholera. Um, how then, in terms of preventative methods, how are you advising people to ensure that, because no one can just look at water like this and say it's contaminated. So what are you advising persons at home do to ensure that they do not consume that kind of a water? Well, first of all, I should say what really would be the responsibility of the Ministry of Health, first of all. Okay. And, and Nawasa. And Nawasa. Okay. Right, okay. Because, well, the Ministry of Health, we are really responsible and to ensure that the population, you know, consume.